Okay, so we have worked through division. Now we're gonna start looking at word problems. And um, word problems are a little tricky because it's not so much that the math in them is hard as it is figuring out what they want you to do. Once you figure out what the problem is asking and what they're expecting of you, it's not that bad. The math isn't any harder than any other math problem. It's figuring out what they're asking you to do. So when we look at word problems, we kind of take a couple steps. The first thing is we want to figure out what are they asking you to solve? You're getting all this information. What do they want? What's the final product that they want from you? It's also important here to check and see if there's any fluff. Um, sometimes they'll throw in extra random information that you don't need that doesn't help you just to throw you off. And you can get rid of that. We just call it fluff. And then we want to figure out how can I find the answer. So once I know what they're asking, then how do I find the answer? So we're going to work through three today. Um, and some of these are going to be one-step problems. So some of them you're going to be able to just solve one and it'll be good. Others are going to be two-step problems where you're either going to have to divide then multiply or maybe divide then divide. And they could be mixed operations. So all of them are going to involve division, but some of them, uh, all the ones we're going to do on here are going to be division. Some of them might be subtraction, some might be addition, some might be multiplication. You've got to read the problem and figure out what it's asking. So our first one. 37 people wanted to ride the bus to the museum. Each row of seats on the bus will hold three people. How many rows of seats will it take to hold everyone? Okay, so let's read through again and see if we can find any of this fluff. See if this problem has anything we can get rid of. We'll take it a sentence at a time. 37 people wanted to ride the bus to the museum. Well, that's important because that's got 37. That's got one of our numbers in it. I'm going to go ahead and circle this number. We can't get rid of that. Each row of seats on the bus will hold three people. That's important, too, because that's another number. How many rows of seats will it take to hold everyone? I'm going to underline that because that's what our end goal is. That's what it's really asking is, how many rows of seats do we need to hold everybody? So, 37 people, and there can be three to a seat. So, are you going to add, subtract, multiply, or divide those? You're going to divide, right? 37 is your dividend. It's your total. Three is your divisor. It means it takes three people to make a complete group, three people to make a complete seat. So I am going to box method, divide this. 37 divided by three. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring it over. I'm going to come over here and list my multiples. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, and 27. Okay, so my first one. How many times can 3 go into 3? Well, we know that that's an exact multiple, and 3 can go into 3 exactly one time. Now I multiply them. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. I'm going to go ahead and show where I bring that zero up, but I'm not going to put it in front of my seven because it doesn't change my number. So I've got check marks all the way across. I'm ready to start over. How many times can three go into seven? Well, let's see. Three, six, nine. That's too much. So we've got to jump back one. Six is the closest multiple I can get, and that is three going in one, two times. Oh, on the false marker. 2 times 3 is 6. 7 minus 6 is 1. I don't have anywhere left to bring it over. So that means I'm going to bring it up as a remainder. So when I did 37 divided by 3, I got 12 remainder 1. I'm going to go ahead and do my multiplication to check myself. I'm going to multiply my whole, goodness. I'm going to multiply my whole quotient times my divisor. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3. Then I'm going to add on this remainder, and I get 37. So I know my multiplication is correct. But here's where it gets a little tricky. And this is what more problems like to do. They like to trick you because we've really got to think about it. So we did the math. We know that 37 divided by 3 is 12 remainder 1. But that's not what the question asks. The question doesn't ask what's the exact answer. The question says... How many rows of seats will it take to hold, here's our big key word, everyone? 
So we know we're going to fill 12 seats. There's no doubt about it. If our answer is 12 remainder 1, that means 12 full rows. We have 12 full rows of people. But we still have this one leftover friend. So if I say it will take 12 rows of seats to hold everyone, I'm not really telling the truth because it's not going to hold everyone. We're going to fill up 12 rows, but we've still got one person left over. So when that happens, that means that 12 isn't going to hold everybody. So we're going to have to jump up. It's going to take, it will take, 13 rows to seat everyone. Notice I just said it'll take 13 rows to seat everyone. I didn't say it's going to take 13 complete rows because it's not. But one thing on questions like this, if I have a remainder, then I have to jump up my whole number. Because if I just said 12, then I'm not really answering the question the way they want because that's not taking everyone. So the math, you saw the math on that wasn't bad at all. But the logic and the reasoning behind it is where people tend to get messed up. Okay, so the next problem we're gonna look at, and um, we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna see. So our first one was a one step problem. This one we're gonna have to check and see if we can solve it in one steps or if it's gonna take two. So our problem is Gumbo has 492 baseball cards. His favorite is Babe Ruth. First, he divides his cards into four boxes. Then he divides the cards in each box evenly into three albums. How many cards are in each album? Okay, so first, let's look for fluff. Let's go sentence by sentence. Gumbo has 492 baseball cards. That's probably pretty important. That gives us one of our numbers. We're gonna go ahead and circle it. His favorite is Babe Ruth. Do we need to know that? Or is that fluff? Are they trying to give us, make it really wordy so we get confused? I don't think we need to know that his favorite is Babe Ruth, so we're gonna get rid of that sentence. First, he divides his cards into four boxes. That sounds like it's pretty important. It gives us a number and it gives us a clue word. Then, he divided the cards in each box evenly into three albums. We got another clue word and another number there. That sounds pretty important. How many cards are in each album? That's important because that tells us what's our final answer. What's the end game? The end game is we want to know how many cards are in each album. Now we have to figure out how to get there. So we know he had 492 cards, and then he divided those cards into four boxes. Then, once they're in the boxes, he divided them again into three albums. So, the problem was pretty nice. It gave us, you can't see that. It told us divides and divides. It went ahead and gave us our operation for both of them. We know we're dividing twice. And, we see the words first and then. That tells us that we're taking multiple steps. So, we know first he had 492 cards, and he divides them into four boxes. So we need to figure out, here are Gumbo's four boxes. We need to figure out how many cards are in each box. And we know that it's going to be division. 492 divided by four. Divide, multiply, subtract, and bring it down. We're going to list our multiples of 4, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36. There we go, our first 9. Okay, how many times can 4 go into 4? Well, it's an exact match for multiples, so it can go in one time. We've divided. Now when we multiply, 1 times 4 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. We're going to bring down our 9. We've got checks all the way across, so we're ready to start back. How many times can four go into nine without going over? Oh, 12's too much, have to go back. So eight's as close as we can get. And that is the second multiple of four. 
so it can go in two times. Now we're gonna multiply. Two times four is eight. Nine minus eight is one. We have one number left to bring down, and that's a two. So now we're at 12. We have checks all the way across, so we're ready to start over. How many times can four go into 12 without going over? We have an exact match for multiples, and so it can go in one, two, three times. Three times four is 12. 12 minus 12 is zero. We have nothing left to bring down, so we're gonna look for a remainder. We see that we don't have one. So we have found that the quotient is 123. Now we're always gonna check ourselves with multiplication. 123, we're gonna do quotient times divisor. Four times three is 12. Four times two is eight, plus one is nine. Four times one is four. We got the same answer. So that means for the first step, we have figured out that Gumbo has 100 23 cards in each of his four boxes. I'm gonna change colors of marker to show you step two. So we, we figured out first he divides his cards into four boxes. Got it, there's 123 cards in each box. Then he divided the cards in each box evenly into three albums. So now each of these boxes is getting divided into three. So we're not going to do 492 divided by three because that's not how many are in each box. How many are in each box? We have 123 in each box now. So we're gonna do 123 divided by three. When we list our multiples, we get three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, divide, multiply, subtract, and bring it down. Okay, so we're gonna start. How many times can three go into one? It can't, it can go in zero times, or you can put an X over it. We're gonna go ahead and do the shortcut. We know we can go ahead and just underline the one in the next number, since that was a zero, to see how many times three can go into 12. When we looked, that's an exact match for multiples, and that's the fourth multiple. So three can go into 12, goodness, four times. When we multiply three times four, we get 12. Subtract 12 minus 12, you're ending up with zero. And then you can bring down your three. We have check marks all the way across, so we're ready to start again. How many times can three go into three? That's an exact match for multiples. So we've divided, three can go into three one time. One times three is three. Three minus three is zero. We have nothing left to bring down. So that means we're gonna look for a remainder. We don't have one. So 123 divided by three is 41. Like always though, before we say that's definitely our answer, we're gonna check ourselves. Three times one is three. Three times four is 12. 123. So we got the original dividend. That means that in each of these albums that Gumbo has, he has put 41 baseball cards. How many cards are in each album? Now, if we were to want to write that in a sentence, we could say there are 41 baseball cards in each album. We have answered the question. We have figured out what was important. We had done both steps that were asked of us, and we knew we had to divide twice. The math wasn't hard. That division wasn't any harder than anything we've done before. We just had to figure out what they wanted us to do. Okay, this is the last problem we're gonna do together. It says, Carl's mom made 25 mushrooms for Carl and four friends to eat. If each of them ate the same number of mushrooms, how many did each person eat? So let's check for fluff. Let's read it sentence by sentence. 
Carl's mom made 25 mushrooms, so that's important, for Carl and four friends to eat. That, that gives us a lot of information. If each of them ate the same number of mushrooms, that's going to help. How many did each person eat? I'm going to kind of squiggly under that because that's our question. That's important too. That tells us what we're looking at. And we had a clue here. If each of them ate the same number of mushrooms, so if we have a total and we're splitting them into even groups, we know that's going to be division. Now, how many mushrooms do we start out with? 25. So we have 25 mushrooms. And we need to figure out what we're dividing it by. This is our dividend because it is the total number that we have. How many are we dividing it by? So we want to say we're dividing it by four, right? Because that's the number we see. But that's where they trick you. Because for we are sharing between Carl. Carl's got curly hair. So it's Carl and four of Carl's friends. So how many kids is that that we're dividing it again by? One, two, three, four, five. So the 25 mushrooms are being divided by five people. Your five's your divisor because that's your number of groups. That's how many makes a complete group. It would take five mushrooms to make a complete group because they, each of them would get one. So we want to know how many is each person going to eat. Well, we don't even have to write out the division for this one because we know 25 divided by 5. That's one of our easy facts that we know. So we know that each person will eat what times 5 equals 25? It's five. Each person will eat five mushrooms. The math wasn't bad. The hard thing on this one is knowing that it's Carl plus four friends. You have to read very carefully to know what the problem's asking you to do.